you imagine if we were more obedient? If we took God at His word? There is a reason to believe God. There is a reason to our faith. You could be poor in the eyes of man and yet rich in the eyes of God. Joy and satisfaction comes by knowing your purpose in life. Shalom and welcome back to this week's program, Kingdom Insight. This is your evangelist, evangelist, Dr. Kazumba Charles of Christ Passion Evangelistic Ministries. We bring the Word of God to you because we believe in the power of the Word of God. And uh, in the studio today with me is the man of God. We had to bring him back. We had to come back and discuss the topic that we, it was unfinished business, purpose, greatness, and destiny. Pastor Phil, welcome to this week's program. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. You know, uh, Pastor Phil is a, a, a dear brother, dear friend, and uh, as we share this program with you today, uh, Purpose, uh, Greatness, and Destiny. Remember last time we talked about uh, uh, how to celebrate the greatness God has placed inside of you through the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. Yes. And uh, we talked about uh, destiny is God selecting you yes. even when everyone else has rejected you. Yes. Now, I'll stop on that point because uh, that's where we see the younger David. Yes. And you're going to share with us uh, the story of uh, David here. Yes. Because uh, when you look at that statement that you made last time, destiny is God selecting you even when everyone else has rejected you. Rejected. David show up on the scene. The, church, the army of, the, of, of Israel are standing on the battleground yes. for 40 days. Yes. Goliath has been taunting God. Yes. The army could not do anything. But inside of David, there was a greatness. Yes. There was a purpose yes. when he came to the battleground. Yes. He sees something that the army of Israel could not see, man yes. of God. Yes. He gets there. And they reject him. Yes. They, his brothers actually call him names. He says, you are arrogant. Mm -hmm. You come out here because of your pride. You just want to see what, uh, uh, what the army are doing here. You just come to watch. And David stands there, but that doesn't discourage David at all. Because David has a purpose, has God's greatness in him. And we're going to talk about that. And uh, he sees a different destiny for the army of Israel to defeat Goliath, to put Goliath to sleep. And I believe as you listen to this program, whatever Goliath that has been in your life, whatever giant that has been in your life, standing in your way to the purpose and the plans of God, must go in the power of the name of Jesus Christ. By the time you are done with this program, I believe that giant will be out of the way. Pastor Phil, share with us purpose, greatness, and destiny. David. Thank you, man of God. It's an, in, it's an interesting passage, of course. Um, David finds himself um, facing a giant by the name of Goliath. But the inception, uh, uh, the beginning part of the story is really interesting because it starts in a valley called um, Elah, which uh, the children of Israel, the army of Israel, finds themselves on one side and the armies of the Philistines find themselves on the other side. And then uh, instead of engaging to a common warfare, which would result in, in a magnitude and a multitude of loss of life, they release into the valley their warrior, their champion, by the name of Goliath. And he defies the armies of Israel. And he tells them, send me a man to fight with me. And if he beats me, um, we will serve Israel. But if I beat him, then Israel will serve us. Mm -hmm. And so the story starts from there. But then David steps into the scene, as you, you know, so eloquently stated. And then at that point, David looks at the same situation that the, the soldiers looked at. And I just want to read the passage quickly for reference here. We have the Bible. It, we can start it from 1 um, Samuel chapter 17, verse 32 to 37. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Um, Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You're only a young man and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. And uh, when a lion and a bear came, I carried off a sheep from the and carried off a sheep from the flock. I went after it and struck it 
and uh, rescued a sheep from its mouth. And when it turned against me, I seized it by its hair and struck it and killed it. But first of all, David shows up into the same predicament that the soldiers had been in. Mm -hmm. Men of God, you stated in a previous broadcast, the soldiers were trained for that particular situation. They were prepared for that particular situation. Mm -hmm. But David shows up and the soldiers, what petrifies them, what scares them, what frightens them, David looks at it as if it is just another incident and another situation mm -hmm. for him to get past. And that amazes me because we're talking about greatness here. We're talking about victory as well today. In order to see greatness, in order to experience greatness, you have to see yourself beyond the storm, beyond the, the, the attacks, beyond the battle. If you don't have the mindset that can already, um, how do I put this, that can already envision yourself past the storm, you will never achieve greatness. Mm -hmm. David finds himself in the same predicament. The question that he asked the armies of Israel is, what will be given to the man mm -hmm. who defeats this um, Goliath? Mm -hmm. And then it amazes me because the armies are petrified at the fact that we don't know what to do, but then all he can, all he can ask is, what is the reward? Mm -hmm. And so this tells me that he had a mindset that immediately sent him past the storm yes. everybody else was, was facing. Mm -hmm. He didn't share the same um, fear. He didn't share the same paralysis that the soldiers were sharing. David had a vision mm -hmm. of victory for his life. Hallelujah. I, I, I like that. He did not share into the fear, the intimidation mm -hmm. of Goliath that he had intimidated. Think of this. For 40 days, the army, the trained army, mm -hmm. they were equipped, trained. They went to school for it. Mm -hmm. And here is a younger David. He's never been to school. Mm -hmm. He has never done any military stuff. That's he right. sees Goliath. And it's like he, he devalues mm -hmm. the importance of the battle there, which makes the, the, his brother so upset. Mm -hmm. But what was in David was the spirit that was totally different. Every, he had a purpose in mind. I can take this man down. And not only the purpose, you say, the, the, you know, the, the, the past, first of all, David gives the credentials to the, to the, to the, uh, to the, to the king. Uh, whenever, but when, he, when the king says, uh, you, can't, you are young, this guy has been training since he was young, David gives his credentials. Yes. And the credentials are what? I have been what? With the lion and a bear. I've gone through such and such and such. So off of that, then I believe I can also defeat Goliath. And I love the way he puts it. And I believe it's, it's off of, um, if I'm not mistaken, he begins to speak to, at first, the soldiers, then he speaks to um, Eliab, then he speaks to um, um, I believe he speaks to um, Saul, and then eventually he speaks to Goliath. But when he talks to King Saul, which I believe it's in verse 45, mm -hmm. the point that he says is that Saul puts on him his armor, uh -huh. and Saul, Saul puts on him his sword. Mm -hmm. But David says to Saul, I'm not used to this. I cannot walk with this. Yes. In other words, your personal experience is not what's going to get me over my storm. Yes. So your personal experience may be working well for you, mm -hmm. but it's not, it is not necessarily what's going to get me past what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. And then David begins to testify of how he had taken down a, a lion and a bear mm -hmm. in his own particular story. Yes. And it, which leads me to Revelations 12, 11, where it says we defeat the devil by the words of our testimonies yes. and the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And now, Amen. In other words, we conquer life as children of God based off of experiences mm -hmm. we go through with yes. Jesus Christ. So I cannot use what you've gone through that would necessarily help me to go through what I'm going through. Yeah. We all have our own respective stories. Mm -hmm. David says one day a lion showed up mm -hmm. and decided to steal a sheep. Yes. And then I was dumb enough to run after the lion and then I grabbed, I hit the lion in the head. The lion let go of the sheep, but then the lion turned on me. Mm -hmm. And then I grabbed the lion by the bear and I struck his head off. Yes. And then the lion let go of the sheep. Mm -hmm. And then I went back to the flock. Now the next day a bear showed up and the bear decided to steal one of them sheep again. Mm -hmm. Now because I was dumb enough to do it with the lion, mm -hmm. I figured the same God will lead me mm -hmm with the bear. Yes. So I ran after the bear and I struck the bear in the head. Mm -hmm. The bear let go of the sheep, mm -hmm. but then the bear turned on me. Mm -hmm. The same way I dealt with the lion, the same way I killed the bear. And so he's telling King Saul, mm -hmm. I just figured that the same God yeah. who took me through the Hallelujah. lion, the Hallelujah. same God who took me through the bear Hallelujah. is the same God who's going to make me uh -huh. take the, the head of Goliath off. Mm -hmm. And that's the confidence that David had in him mm -hmm. to conquer Goliath. Now, what he hears, man of God, man of God, as you're sharing that, because this is what is very interesting. So 
David uses the, the experience, That's right. as you're sharing, to, to, to make his case, yeah. to say, my experience, yes. what I've experienced, what I've gone through, will give me victory to this giant. Is that what you're telling me? That is correct. And now look here. Because the other thing I figured is that we people, we let the past, instead of using our past mm -hmm. to use it to fight the giant, we let the past hold us back. That's right. The past holds us hostage. Right. The failures of yesterday holds us hostage. But David refuses. He uses his past in a very present moment, the now moment, to go after Goliath. And what happens now? That is correct. On verse, on, verse, on, on verse 32, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, because he speaks to Goliath on 45, but on 32, he speaks to King Saul. But it's interesting because he gives him a testimony. This is what I did with the lion. This is what I did with the bear. And this is what I'm about to do with Goliath as well mm -hmm. on account of God being by my side. What is surprising is that he uses his life story. Mm -hmm. But what's amazing is that Saul puts a sword in his hand and puts these things in his hand mm -hmm. and tries to modify his relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And sometimes because of the things we've gone through in the past, we allow people to modify, to, to, to oh, implement wow. certain Hallelujah. things on how we, mm -hmm. we relate mm -hmm. with God. Yes. And you've got to be able to, 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 to stand flat-footed mm -hmm. and trust that the same God who has carried you from Africa all the way here yes. is the same God who can deal with Canada the same way. Amen. Amen. lead you to a place of victory. Hallelujah. David stood flat-footed and he said, I'm going to do it the same way mm -hmm. that God helped me back then. Mm -hmm. And so I love it so much that he tells um, King Saul mm -hmm. that the same God will escort me through. Yes. It's not going to be through the, sp the, the sword you give me. It's not going to be through um, the shield you give mm -hmm. me. In other words, the word that I'm giving you, people of God, is this. Hallelujah. Do not let the current storm you're going through, do not mm. let the current struggle you're mm. going through change the strategy of success. Amen. Whatever God did for you back then, and if it worked, it's the same God that's talking to you right now, and he's able to transition you from this current place of storm mm -hmm. to a place of victory. Hallelujah. I, I like that. Uh, because uh, if you look at uh, 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 many people, when they are in a life storm, mm -hmm. uh, things are going not so well. We want to about the mission. About the mission. We, wanna, we, we don't want the stress of it. Mm -hmm. We don't see what is on the other side. Mm -hmm. David saw just by standing in front of Goliath. He, remember the soldiers saw only Goliath. They didn't see that he could, you know, they could actually sleep for once. That's right. Sleep for once. <laughs> Put Goliath's noise to the side. Yes. They try to, you know, to accuse David of being arrogant, arrogant. and yet they were spiritually stuck. Mm -hmm. I love that. Let, let me put these two points for you as we share this, uh, you know, purpose. You got to have a purpose in life in order to move on. Life is not a journey that is easy. Life, even a spiritual life, even... Even having an amount of success in any field, you got to have the purpose, the end goal. And two, you got to enjoy the journey. That's, that's right. Many people, they don't want to enjoy the journey when they are struggling. That's they right. just want to get to the destination. Enjoy the journey. Even if the journey is full of the storm, even if the journey is full of uh, the battle, even if the journey is full of the sorrow and tears, enjoy the journey that's because right. the same God who has seen you, who has watched over you, protected you, all these years can still protect you in that storm. Before I bring in Pastor Phil once again, I want to tell you this point. Don't let your past hold you hostage in life and stop you from entering into your destiny. Look, the storm is there not to stop what God wants to do. Right. It is there, actually, if you look at it, it shapes you, it molds you, right. it instills in you a character that is fearless. That is the crazy thing about me, Pastor Phil. Absolutely. The things I've gone through, the things that we've gone through, I look at them from my soccer world Mm -hmm. to just life in general, the, the craziness, the, the, the crazy lifestyle that I lived. I look at it today. I say the same God that protected me then, the same God that gave me victory and set me free, he is the same God fighting for me and fighting with me to go to the destiny that he has done what he has prepared for me. Here's your point. Don't let your past hold you hostage in life. Stop 
you and or stop you from entering your destiny. Reaching your destiny, I want to give you these points, reaching your destiny is not easy. It comes with uh, challenges and yes. obstacles. But you must enjoy your journey to your destiny. Don't wait to reach your destiny or your final destination to be happy. Be happy now. You're not being happy because things are going good. That is the, you know, I go to work sometimes. I go, you know, in places and people are grumpy. And then they say, why do you always are happy? I said, I got nothing to worry about. I'm not happy because I got money. I'm happy because I know I got a purpose. That's right. I got a destiny. And God is my purpose. Come on in, man of God. Share with us on this topic. And it's in the interesting thing about going to a storm is the having the confidence that God is with you. That's where the joy comes from, as the man of God just shared with us. Now, when David faces the same situation that the, the, the soldiers were sharing, you notice, as we said from the beginning of the, the, the program, he didn't share with them the same type of negativity that mm. they had. He saw himself past the storm. He saw himself on the other side of the storm. In other words, there is a mindset between, there is a difference between a mindset that says, I'm going through something. Mm -hmm. That's T H R O. O U G H with the mindset that says I'm going to something that's T O when you say to yourself I'm about to go through something you're telling yourself I visualize myself past the storm Amen. I visualize myself past this financial situation mm -hmm. I visualize myself past this marital situation mm -hmm. but when your mind says I'm going to something you're beginning to depict it is the yeah. end of you yeah. you're beginning to yeah. say to yourself it is the end of my life mm -hmm. this is where mm -hmm. the book ends yeah. but David saw himself past the situation. So his mindset was more so, I'm going through Goliath, mm -hmm. not to Goliath. Yes. David understood that we serve a God who specializes in bringing us through some things. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but there are a few people in the Bible that are going to agree with me. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego understood that God didn't bring them to the fire, but he mm -hmm. led them through the fire. Through the fire. Yes. Joseph understood that God didn't lead him to the pit. He led them through the pit. Mm -hmm. Now, David understood that God didn't lead him to Goliath. He mm -hmm. led him through Goliath. Mm -hmm. Now, if you could just trust in God, he could also lead you through some things. So that is the mindset between mm -hmm. David and the soldiers. The soldiers thought this was the end. Mm -hmm. They were going to a battle. Uh -huh. David, for him, it was only another battle to go through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another battle to go through. Look, I want to show you here in the book of Jeremiah. Uh, uh, you got to understand this. You may be going through a storm, mm -hmm. but understand this. God's plans for you is uh, for a great future That's and the right. uh, jeremiah actually we start from uh, jeremiah 29 verse 10 i want to read from verse 10 so that we can see the context of the scripture here because we just read uh, what it says in uh, verse 11 but i want to get you back to 10 here it says this for thus says the lord mm -hmm. when 70 years have been completed for babylon i will visit you and fulfill my good word to you to bring you back to his place now yeah. you got to go back again in verse nine what is happening is that God told the children of Israel they they had not obeyed they had not obeyed they had put themselves in that situation and they were in the wilderness and then he says uh, you are going to be in Babylon mm -hmm. Babylon is like captivity you're going to be in captivity for such a long time but I won't let you in captivity mm -hmm. even though you haven't look God cannot let yes. you fail that is not our God. God's plans are not to make you fail. People will want you to fail. Actually, in the Christian world, they love it when we fail. They love it when a man of God fell. They love it when people fail because they want to prove a point they are good. Look here. God isn't in that business. Wherever you are in life, he wants to uplift you. He wants to lift you up with the spirit of God. He wants to pump you up to back to where you're supposed to be. Here it says in verse 11, For I know the plans that I have for you declares the Lord plans for welfare and for, for welfare and not for calamity to give you a future and a hope God's only plan a like last time we talked about is what is to give us a good future to give us a hope man's plan is plan B because man wants you to fail right. David when he went into the battle, he had only plan A. Right. The plan A he had was to work. The king wanted to give him plan B. Mm -hmm. Here's the plan B. Take the armor. Take every arsenal that you need, every tools that you need to go and defeat Goliath. David said that is now plan B. Right. Man trying to 
you know, put some things to the plan A of God. When you stick with God, when you stick with the word of God, when you stick with what God has said, even though people leave you, even though people run away from you, even though people cause you cuckoo, crazy, uh, arrogant, stay there, stick in there, and you shall see the salvation of our Lord. That was the younger David. He was called crazy. He stood there. The same people, now look at this, Pastor Phil. The same people that called him arrogant mm -hmm. celebrated with him. Mm -hmm. They celebrated the victory. Ah, isn't powerful. that amazing? It's powerful. It leads me to um, the story where he had in the same verses with his older brother Eliab. Yeah. And then you mentioned the people that are against you. And, and mm. Eliab is his older brother, folk. Eliab is his older brother. And he tells David, as you mentioned, he, David was arrogant. He tells David, you are arrogant and this is not the place for you. And you're only here to see the battle. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that David had a purpose and David had a plan for his life. Mm -hmm. Now, it's funny because the people that will doubt you the most will be those related to you. Yes. Those, the closest to you. And Eliab is older brother from his own household. And, and I'm suggesting to you, Eliab was jealous of David because Eliab understood that the anointing, the anointing of God rested on David. Mm -hmm. Now, because if I take you back to um, 1 Samuel chapter 16, when the coronation of the king occurs, old prophet shows up and begins to anoint everybody. And then he lines up every kid of Jesse. And then um, at some point, the prophet says, well, I don't see the king here, so there's no one to anoint here. And then he asks Jesse, is there, is there anybody else th that you have a, as a son for me to anoint? Mm -hmm. And he says, ah, nobody, but there's someone outside. In other words, you can be rejected by God, yeah. uh, rejected by man, but selected by God. And we talked about it earlier. It's interesting. Men will reject you, but God will choose you. Eliab thought he was the anointed. The old prophet went through everybody down the line, and nobody was fit for the anointing of God. David walks into the house a little later and the prophet looks and says, that is the anointing of God. And I'm Hallelujah. suggesting to you that Eliab was jealous that David had the anointing of God on him. So you have to be very selective on who you allow to speak into your spirit. Hallelujah. Because some people will speak to you mm. as Eliab spoke to David. You are mm. arrogant. You are in such and such and such. And there may be people really close to you, mm. relatives to you, but that don't mean they have the best intention and heart towards you. Yes. They're just intimidated because they see the anointing of God over your life. Hallelujah. I, I love that, Pastor Phil. And I know for sure many of us, uh, uh, you know, when they f we face all these uh, rejection uh, and we, the people we trust mm -hmm. or the people that we trusted, they, they put a break on uh, what God is doing in our lives. Mm -hmm. Look, when you are opposed, it doesn't mean that you are doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. Most of the times, many people, they throw out the gift of God. They mm -hmm. throw out the vision of God, the dream of God upon their lives. Because uh, somebody very influential said, uh, you can't be that. Let me tell you one thing. I am a man of God. I've got no power over your destiny. It yeah. was God himself who created you and he put that destiny. If you listen to me, you have to understand this. God alone can feed that destiny. Now the question is, why does God want you to prosper? Why does God want you to get to your purpose? Why does God want you to have that destiny? It is because when you realize your destiny, and your purpose, you are going to be used as a channel through which God can illustrate and demonstrate his character to the world. God wants always to show up and to show off of his greatness through people. It's amazing he works through people. That's why you are a target by the enemy, because in you, God can move. In you, God can heal the sick. In you, God can give hope to the yeah. hopeless. In you, God can encourage the discouraged. In you, people can find the love they are missing. You are a dynamite and don't let any enemy or the spirit of the enemy to tell you you are nothing. Yes, you may not be at the same level as they are in religiosity or in their spiritual stuff. All you need is Jesus. David, all he had was God and he stands on the battle. They have all this stuff. Him, all he had was God and he knew with God he can do much. With God, you can do much. Pastor Amen. Phil, closing remarks as we conclude this wonderful, wonderful program. I love it. With God, anything is possible. On verse 45, friendly David meets Goliath. 
and Goliath mocks him. Mm -hmm. Just as anybody else that doesn't walk with God mocks those called by God. And he says, why have you sent this young boy to me? And I'll feed your flesh to the birds of the air. And he mocks him. And that's funny because people that are not called by God mm -hmm. always mocks those that are called by God. And so it's part of the journey. But as the man of God said, when God calls you, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. David looks at Goliath finally as we close and he says to him, you've come with armor, javelin, spear, mm -hmm. and everything else with you, and an armor bearer. Mm -hmm. But I don't come with any of that. I come in the name of the Lord of Hallelujah. hosts. Hallelujah. And this pretty much mirrors what the man of God is saying. You can have everything mm -hmm. with you, yes. but you defeat the devil mm -hmm. with the power of prayer. Amen. David Amen. knew that he, and the only way to defeat God was to go in the name of God, the Lord yes. of hosts. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the five stones. It wasn't the slingshots. Mm -hmm. It wasn't anything mm -hmm. that got David past Goliath. Hallelujah. David understood that he had to use the name of the Lord of hosts. In Amen. other words, go with the power of prayer in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It, and I promise you, your Goliath will fall. Hallelujah. Your Goliath will fall if you go in the name of God, if you go in the power of God, and if you go in the spirit of God, yes. and if you stand on the word of God. Yes. Listen, all you need to give your hearers is to give your hear to the voice of God. Who is speaking to you? Who have you allowed to speak into your life? Allow the word of God to shape and to mold your life. I want to give you some point here as I conclude. As a child of God, first of all, you got to understand this. You have a godly destiny, but you must see yourself valuable. David saw himself valuable to God to an extent that he can put his line, I mean his life on the line to first Goliath. See yourself valuable. If you don't value yourself, don't think anybody else will value you. If you don't value your gift, don't think anybody else will value you. Look, before I preach to uh, the world uh, or to thousands of people that we're reaching out, I preach to myself. I got to put that test in there. See yourself valuable because you are valuable in the highest of God. You are valuable in, 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 in the kingdom of God. And the other point I want to share with you here is... Uh, to reach your destiny, you will need to make the right relation, relationships. Right. You talked about uh, people speaking negativity in your life. And you need to understand, you don't need everybody. I'm not saying you don't have to make friends with everybody. Be a friends of many, but choose uh, those who will speak towards, who will speak life towards your destiny. Proverbs chapter three, verse, chapter three, verse three to five, as we wind up. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favor and good reputa rep reputation in the sight of God and man. Let me tell you, be kind to people. You know yourself. You don't have to prove yourself. You have God's destiny. You have the greatness of the anointing of God in you. The future of God is in you. You need not to prove to anybody. Even when God succeeds you, don't even show off. Don't even be proud. Because why? You understand why God is giving you that purpose and that destiny to bring the kingdom of heaven here on earth as it is in heaven. Write to us. We have so many resources that I want to give to you. I want to give you my latest book, The Weapon of Forgiveness. you got to understand that with The Weapon of Forgiveness, you can do much with your destiny. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord watch over you and revive that destiny that is in your life forever and ever. Amen. See you next time. Shalom.